the biggest diamond on earth, countless crowns and brooches that speak louder than words, the royal family's jewellery collection is filled with fascinating secrets. Even the net worth is kept under wraps, although humble estimates start at £5 billion. Let's begin with the most symbolic jewellery in the royal collection, the crowns. In fact, there are dozens of them, much more than most people think. During his coronation, King Charles III first wore St Edward's crown. Even though it was made in the 17th century, it is rumoured to contain gold from earlier Anglo-Saxon crowns, linking the monarchy to ancient British history. Additionally, 444 gems owned by various monarchs adorn it, which makes this piece of jewellery priceless. The value of the gold and precious stones in it is estimated at a few billion pounds. Probably because of that, the crown never leaves Westminster Abbey. It is only worn briefly during the ceremony. Another reason for that, though, is how heavy the crown is. It weighs nearly five pounds. King Charles III switched it to the Imperial State Crown, which is also used for the state opening of Parliament and some official balls. Although it was created less than 100 years ago, it is set with over 3,000 precious stones from various periods. Some jewellery experts have estimated it to be worth between £3 billion and £5 billion. The Cullinan diamond, the crown's most impressive ornament, is a big reason why the price is so crazy. It is part of the largest diamond ever found, weighing a staggering 3,106 carats, or over 600 grams. It was cut into almost 100 pieces to make the most remarkable royal jewellery. The other largest parts of this diamond were set into Queen Mary's crown, also displayed during the coronation. An interesting fact is that Queen Camilla is the first monarch's wife to wear a previously used crown. She decided to do so in the interests of sustainability and efficiency, but traditionally, every consort would commission her own unique crown for the coronation so it's hard to count how many consort crowns the royal collection includes. Reportedly, Camilla thought about wearing Queen Adelaide's crown, encrusted with pearls and estimated at £1 million. She also could have chosen a more expensive one, the crown of Queen Alexandra. The monarch's collection also includes the exclusive £6 million Imperial Crown of India, the George IV State Crown, and probably lots more. Actually, there are crowns that have never been used for coronations. This £1 million piece was made for George IV, but he considered it too feminine to wear on the special day. Luckily, the royal women rescued the diadem from doom and wore it instead of a tiara. For example, the late Queen Elizabeth II regularly picked the diamond piece for official events. However, the late monarch still had an impressive collection of headdresses. It's unclear exactly how many tiaras the royal family owns, but it's likely around four dozen. And it's difficult to figure out how much they're worth as many boast unique gems. For example, the Greville Emerald Kokoshnik tiara was adorned with a 94-carat emerald. The price of such a rare gem is hard to guess, so it ranges from £5 million to £10 million. Another fabulous example is the Grand Duchess Vladimir tiara. The 150-year-old piece of jewellery features 15 circular diamond set motifs. Such a design allows the royals to change up their accessories. The late Queen Elizabeth II wore it with pearl drops and emeralds, and it's believed that there are additional sets of gemstones to complement it, possibly rubies or sapphires. The whole ensemble is estimated at three million pounds. The royal family is no stranger to double duty pieces, like this four million pounds, the girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. It was Queen Elizabeth II's absolute favourite and appeared on British banknotes. Originally, it had pearl spikes to vary it. This Delhi Durbar tiara can also be changed according to its owner's wish. Its value is estimated at £8.5 million and it now belongs to Queen Camilla. The lotus flower tiara was made from a necklace. Despite the delicate size, this tiara's estimated price is £4 million. It contains exclusive constructions with countless diamonds. Right now, Princess Catherine of Wales owns it, and she has worn it on numerous occasions. Her favourite, however, is the Lover's Knot tiara, which was famously worn by the late Princess Diana. There are tiaras in the royal family that aren't as well known, 
but that doesn't make them any less special. Have you ever seen the Brazilian aquamarine Parure tiara made with insanely large 200 carat gems? Or this Burmese ruby tiara, decorated with almost 100 rubies? These two pieces were made for the late Queen Elizabeth II. Because of the rare gems, each of the tiaras costs £5 million. One unknown headdress, the Oual Greville tiara, was recently brought into the spotlight by Queen Camilla. Earlier, it had only been worn by Queen Elizabeth back in the 1940s. This year, the monarch's wife also wore a Belgian sapphire tiara. This one costs more than £6 million and is considered one of the rarest in the royal family's collection because of the huge sapphires. The late Queen Elizabeth II used to complement this tiara with a matching necklace and earrings. The history of this King George VI Victorian suite goes back to the 19th century. So on top of the crazy price of passes 5 million, it also has historical value. Among the most dazzling suites in the Royal Trust is this coronation diamond necklace and earrings created for Queen Victoria in 1858. According to royal experts, the giant diamond in the middle of the necklace symbolizes the power of the monarchy. Another piece presented during the coronation is the George VI festoon necklace. The late Queen Elizabeth II got it as a gift from her father, and it clearly held a special meaning for the monarch as she wore it on numerous occasions. An integral part of Elizabeth II's style was her pearl necklace. It was the first precious gift from her papa when Elizabeth was just three years old. Following family custom, King George VI gave her two pearls on her birthday every year. It was said that by wearing this special necklace, Elizabeth was paying tribute to her father. Still, for momentous occasions, Elizabeth II wore more colorful jewelry. For example, this necklace, which has matching earrings and a bracelet. It features stunning rubies and diamonds. The whole ensemble costs more than 10 million pounds. Still, it's not the priciest jewelry in the collection. This Nizam of Hyderabad necklace is valued at 66 million pounds. The platinum piece features approximately 300 diamonds. Kate Middleton was the most recent royal to wear it. After such an insane price, it's hard to be surprised, right? However, there are lots more treasures in Buckingham Palace. In particular, Queen Alexandra's Dagmar necklace looks like a piece of art. Perhaps due to its complex design, the royals haven't worn it for 60 years. Meanwhile, Queen Elizabeth II often showed off the royal family's emerald necklaces. The £10 million Greville emerald necklace and the £120,000 Delhi Durbar. The second one has a number of matching pieces, earrings, a brooch and other elements that complete the tiara. This choker was also a part of a suite, but it became famous as Princess Diana and now Princess Catherine's statement jewellery. Speaking of the two princesses, it's important to mention the sapphire engagement ring. This piece has several matching earrings and necklaces and has become one of the most recognisable pieces of the royals. But only a small number of people know that it was based on a well-known family brooch that Queen Victoria once owned. She received it from her soon-to-be husband, Prince Albert, the day before their wedding. Such an ensemble became a symbol of eternal love. In fact, the royal family has dozens more pieces of jewellery that have significant meanings. Queen Elizabeth II famously said her brooches spoke louder than her words. She owned almost 100 symbolic pieces, which now belong to Queen Camilla. The Cullinan III and the Fufa brooch is an emblem of the strength and longevity of the British monarchy. Due to its insanely huge diamonds, the jewellery is valued at more than £40 million. And the royal family owns a great deal more diamond adornments. Queen Victoria's most famous ones were the fringe pearl and diamond brooch and the diamond jubilee brooch. All of them are heirlooms of the crown, meaning that they pass directly from monarch to monarch to be worn by the queen's regnant or consort. One of the most notable in the brooch collection is the Cartier lily brooch, which measures just under seven inches long. This flower symbolizes trustworthiness, so it's often seen at royal weddings and international negotiations. The royals also possess a whole bouquet of floral jewelry, paying tribute to the British national flowers the centenary rose brooch with its hand-painted flower and 100 diamonds. The Australian hibiscus brooch and the crystal orchid brooch are just a few examples. 
The never-ending jewellery box also includes several shamrock brooches, which echo the national emblem. The one most frequently seen in public over the last few years is the flame lily brooch. Despite being valued modestly at £20,000, it had a special meaning to the late Queen Elizabeth II. It was a gift to the then Princess Elizabeth by schoolchildren of Zimbabwe before her father's death. Elizabeth wore it when she first stepped out as Queen. Some experts consider it a symbol of taking responsibility for the country. Besides, for the most exclusive and famous pieces, the monarchy owns a lot of never-seen jewellery. But we hope the royals show up in them at official events soon. As a new generation ascends the throne, we look forward to the fresh symbols they'll reveal from the royal jewels and how they'll breathe new life into these timeless pieces. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications as we'll keep you updated on all things royal.